Hi, my name is David Ingalls. We're going to do another example of magnetic circuits with nonlinear materials. In this example, we'll do part one. We'll derive the load line, which we can use to solve for the operating point of a nonlinear material. Again, we'll have a more realistic core here, which represents a motor in some cases. It has some area, and there's a gap. That gap also has an area. In this case, those two are going to be the same. There's a length, and that core length is very similar to the core length plus the gap. We're also going to ignore the fringing field. So this material will have some nonlinear VH curve. Just to remind you, we'd have H here, E here. On a linear plot, it's going to look something like that. And we need to find the operating point. The goal of the operating point is to set up a situation where we can create another equation and determining the intersection of that, either graphically or using a computer, to find the operating point. This starts with a, an equivalent circuit. Looks something like this. There are two reluctances. A reluctance of the core and the reluctance of the gap. The driving force here is the magnetomotive force, or Ni. That magnetomotive force must be equal to the flux times the reluctance of the core plus the flux times the reluctance of the gap. Just like in Kirchhoff's voltage law, the flux and the, times the reluctance and the, the sum of the sort of drops here will equal that. So this is just like Ohm's law. We can we can um, expand this a little bit using formulas from the previous example to say the magnetomotive force is equal to the flux times the length of the core over the permeability of the core times the area plus the flux times the length of the gap over the permeability of the gap. The permeability of the gap is mu naught because it's air and areas are the same, so we've dropped the subscript on area. We can continue to build this. Ni is equal to, we can replace flux with magnetic field times area. And we can bring the area out front, length of the core, mu core, plus length of the gap, you not. The areas cancel. We're going to create from this equation a linear equation where the intercepts are given by a B and an H. So if we solve for B, we can get this N I mu naught over the length of the gap equals B, length of the core, mu naught, length of the gap, mu core, plus B. And isolating for B, B equals minus B over mu core, L core, L gap mu naught plus n i mu naught over L g. And we're almost there. One more rearrangement, and we'll be able to see the load line. <clears throat> Minus L c L g core and gap times mu naught h. C B over mu core gives us H for the core. And that's the horizontal axis of our plot. Plus N I mu naught over L G. Note that this last term is constant. So that is our load line equation. This term is constant. This term is constant, that's variable, 
an S variable. So this looks like y equals m x plus b, where the y-intercept when h is 0 is equal to n i mu naught over the length of the gap. To find the x-intercept, we have to solve for the value of uh, h that returns a zero value of b, or when these two terms are equal. The x-intercept is given by n i mu naught lg or lg mu naught lc, or just n i over l of the core. Now these are nice terms. If we look at, if we try to show this on a plot, we can think about what they mean. So this is h, ampere turns per meter. This is b in Tesla. We know that this intercept is n i mu naught over lg. And that is interpreted as b if we ignore the core, or if the core has zero reluctance. And that's a good starting point if you had to estimate, usually. Now this intercept is n i over l c, and that is h if the gap is zero, as in the previous example that we did. So we'll see in the next example how we can apply this load line method to determine the operating point of a nonlinear magnetic circuit.